These drawings belong to a student of mine. This is what was in the mine. It's a diabolical spirit. Well, around this time last year, we made a video about the top 2020 horror movies we couldn't wait to see. Due to circumstances beyond our control, most of those movies went unreleased this year. I hope you'll forgive me for any repeats on the list, but what can you do? Warner Brothers is currently leading the charge on some home releases, but I would really like to be able to sit in a theater with a bunch of other movie lovers someday. In the meantime, let's all dream of the top five 2021 horror movies we can't wait to see. Coming in at number five, we've got Halloween Kills. After Michael Myers made his triumphant return in 2018, people were ready for more, and Bloomhouse was ready to give more to the people too. Unfortunately, Halloween 2020 went without any iconic slashers returning to the big screen. These saga of the Strode family in their eternal struggle against a mass maniac went uncontinued. However, there is some light at the end of this tunnel. If anything, Halloween 2021 will be even crazier than anyone could imagine. We all missed the communal Halloween experience this year, meaning that next year's is going to be off the chain. Plus, a late in the year release means that the vaccine could have been widely implemented by that time, and wouldn't that be lovely? There have been plenty of teaser trailers for this Carpenter-backed reboot, but otherwise the folks involved have been pretty tight-lipped. Hopefully this is a good sign of things to come. They don't want to spoil anything because they know it's worth the wait. While the 2018 reboot slash sequel didn't exactly capture everything magical about the original, it was definitely a thrilling return to Haddonfield. The many, many Halloween sequels that cropped up over the years since the initial release took Michael Myers and Laurie Strode to all sorts of different places, but it also lost a lot of the initial magic. They brought plenty of new ideas to the table for sure, but it's nice to refocus on the original characters and the violence Myers is able to enact. Plus, the pushback release means that once we get kills, we're already a year away from ends. Halloween movies, on Halloween, year after year. What could be better? Plus, who knows, maybe the treatment old Mike is getting could inspire other filmmakers to take up the classic 80s reigns in other ways. Freddy and Jason in the modern era? It's more likely than you'd think. As long as they try their best not to tumble down any remake pitfalls. Let's hope these retro revivals stand the test of time. Coming in at number four, we've got Last Night in Soho. Edgar Wright has made his bid as one of the premier filmmakers of the 2000s and 2010s. He's racked up quite the filmography over the past couple decades with the genre-bending Cornetto trilogy, Shaun of the Dead, Hot Fuzz in the World's End, and fascinating pop culture mashups like Scott Pilgrim and Baby Driver. The mark he's left on contemporary filmmaking is indelible. Love him or hate him, he's here to stay. And for the record, I think he's wonderful. But after making an incredible run of tongue-in-cheek, visually fascinating flicks, he's trying his hand at straight-up psychological horror. Last night in Soho, baby. Another upcoming flick that remains shrouded in mystery. It was supposed to make its way to theaters in 2020, but now has a spring 21 release date. All we've got so far is a cast, a vague synopsis, and some production stills, but that's enough to get anyone excited if they know what they're looking for. Something tells me there might be renewed interest in this movie too. Over the past little while, the Netflix series The Queen's Gambit has blown up. Folks can't stop talking about it, and guess what? It's led by Anya Taylor-Joy, who is coincidentally the lead in Last Night in Soho. Taylor Joy has made quite the name for herself in the horror sphere, starring in flicks like The Witch and Split, but her appeal seems to be widening. So folks who might have not been thinking about it before are likely much more interested now that they've got a familiar face involved. Part period piece, part time travel affair, part psychological horror, Last Night in Soho should be a beautiful and disturbing treat for any horror fan. Coming in at number three, we've got The Conjuring, The Devil Made Me Do It. It's been quite a while since the last mainline Conjuring film came out. The first one was out in 2013, followed by a sequel three years later, and now we're staring down a five year period since The Conjuring 2 released. Sure, there were a few Annabelle flicks in between, and The Nun and La Llorona too, but folks are hungry for another Ed and Lorraine Warren adventure. Hopefully it lives up to all the hype, especially after being pushed back from 2020. Pulling from real life experiences of the famous paranormal investigators, The Conjuring series has always managed to present audiences with some pretty freaky flicks. Before The Devil Made Me Do It, the folks behind the scenes decided to move away from the typical haunted house story. This time, it's the story of Arnie Cheyenne Johnson. You know, the first known case in the United States where the defense sought to prove innocence based on the defendant being demonically possessed? Yeah, that one. Should be a real wild ride. In addition to all the spooks and scares one would expect from a Conjuring movie, there's also going to be a fair share of courtroom drama and historical intrigue. In fact, it could feel a lot like The Exorcism of Emily Rose, but with a different twist. Another thing to watch out for this time is the introduction of a new director. James Wan did direct the first two, but this time around it's going to be Michael Chavez, who is known for directing La Llorona. 
We'll see if he can bring a fresh new take to the Conjuring series. He's strongly backed by Juan, so I'm sure it's in good hands. Coming in at number two, we've got Candyman. Yet another case of a movie that's been pushed back to ensure theatrical release. I respect it, but how long are we gonna have to wait? Folks have been amped about this movie since it was announced, and from what we've seen, it's going to be a doozy. Directed by Nia DaCosta, bringing back Tony Todd, and featuring all sorts of visual wonder, folks are chomping at the bit to see Candyman once again. Seemingly taking the same route as 2018's Halloween by retconning sequels and starting from where the first ended, but some years later, we find ourselves back at Cabrini Green. This time, however, it's not the heavily subsidized housing project it once was. Cabrini Green has been gentrified, but the legend of Candyman still echoes throughout the hallways of the glassy, spacious condos and art galleries. Artist Anthony McCoy stumbles across the legend and starts spreading word of Candyman among the high-class community that now inhabits the Hook Wielder's stomping ground, and that was a bad call. From the trailers and the previews, folks are definitely buzzing about this B-themed reimagining of a classic. Plus, there's the papercraft shadow puppet short that details Candyman's history, and it is absolutely excellent. Look it up if you haven't seen it. Plenty of folks were majorly disappointed when this movie got pushed back to the new year, and for good reason. When it hits theaters, you can be assured there will be plenty to talk about. And finally, at number one, we've got Antlers. I have been waiting for a fresh Nick and Tosca story ever since Channel Zero was cancelled, and now, the waiting continues. Antlers has been ready to rock since about this time last year, with the final trailer releasing last December, but shutdowns pushed it back further and further. It's ready, we're ready, but still we wait. It's the tale of a little boy and his connection to a wendigo, a shapeshifter, a skinwalker. Based on the story The Quiet Boy by Nick Antosca, it draws from all sorts of stories to make a terrifying tale for the ages. Indigenous mythology, internet lore, and more all influence the dark and twisted small town tale, and with Guillermo del Toro backing the flick, you know there's gonna be some good monster action here. Antlers has been on plenty of people's radar for over a year now, and the anticipation is absolutely killer. If you find yourself totally unable to wait, check out the short story it's based on. I'll link it in the description. Just don't blame me if that makes you want to see it even more. And that's only five! It feels like forever since I've paid attention to upcoming releases. I suppose that's due to everything still being quietly pushed back, but still. One has to wonder what release schedules will look like after all is said and done. Will folks pivot to total home release, or will theaters find their place in the sun once more? Hopefully more small scale solutions are put in place. I'm tired of paying extra for 3D I didn't want to see in the first place. So what would you think of the list? Are you as hyped as I am? What movie are you most looking forward to? Make sure you let me know down in the comments. Speaking of comments, let's take a look at some of your more meddling ones from the top 5 fairy tales with dark origins. Buried X in Black says, I grew up with a version of Cinderella where the stepsisters cut up their feet to fit into the glass slipper. See, that always confused me. The prince would definitely be able to see all the blood and flesh through the glass slipper, right? Zachary Gudzinski says, Now seeing these adapted uncensored would be nice. Just imagine Red Riding Hood finding your grandmother eaten by a werewolf or Goldilocks being a criminal trying to rob a family of werebears. Hey man, it's public domain at this point. How about it? Pretend Jock says you should check out Shelley Duvall's fairy tale theater. Keeps most of the dark side intact with future superstar actors. Might be a slow burn for you youngsters though. I resent that. Slow burns are my jam. Amber Burnett says, so what does it say about me that I prefer the original versions of the fairy tales? Says that you're exactly the type of person who would get along with the top five crew. And Fabiola Inesta says, banana, I don't know what to say, banana, banana, banana. Seems like you know exactly what you want to say. And that's all the time we have for today. I'm going to go take a nap in a helium-filled chamber. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.